Hello and welcome to The Postcard Professor, where we take complex ideas and explain them in the space of a postcard. In this video, we're going to be using our natural convection equations in order to calculate the heat transfer through an enclosure. So to start off, let's take a look at our geometry. Our enclosure is going to be a rectangular prism with heat transfer through two of the side walls. So the two walls that we care about, I've drawn in solid lines, and but in reality, it is completely enclosed. The height of the enclosure is going to be one meter. The width we will set as two meters. And then finally, the length is going to be 0 0.6 meters. And we're gonna have temperatures on either side. Now, I'm making this a little bit more complicated. These temperatures are actually going to be the air temperatures on either side of the enclosure rather than being the wall temperatures. That means that we're going to have to deal with natural convection on the outside of the enclosure as well. So if we were to draw a resistive diagram of this problem, we would actually need to account for three different resistances. So this first resistor is going to be the thermal resistance between the air temperature, Tn, and the temperature of the actual wall on the left-hand side. So this wall on the left is at this temperature, Tw1. Then we're going to have that central resistor as the enclosure resistance between these two walls. And then finally, we're going to have natural convection again on the right side between that right wall and T out. So as we're referring to them, this is going to be R1, R2, and R3. And of course, our heat transfer is moving from hot to cold, so it'll be moving from left to right. Now to make our lives easier, we are going to take all the fluid properties at a single value rather than correctly adjusting our fluid properties based on whatever temperature, film temperature, we happen to be at. This is just going to make our life easier, and we are going to be accepting some accuracy penalties based on that. Finally, we are going to have to get an initial guess for our two wall temperatures. Our guess to start off is going to be that the wall on the left is at 80 degrees Celsius, and the wall on the right is at 20 degrees Celsius. Now, because we are taking the fluid properties to be the same over the entire problem, symmetry is going to apply. So we know that the delta T on the left-hand side should be the same as the delta T on the right-hand side. And our initial guesses do correctly reflect that. Now, our goal here is to update our guesses for TW1 and TW2. Normally, we would want to do multiple iterations until these values stopped changing. However, for this problem, we're only going to run through a single iteration, update the values, and then call it done. So let's go ahead and grab these values for the fluid properties. Our new value is going to be 1.798 times 10 to the negative fifth. Our thermal conductivity is 0 0.02735. Our Prandtl number is 0 0.7228. And finally, beta is just one over our film temperature, which is one. And finally, beta is just one over our temperature, which is one over 323 Kelvin or 0 0.00310 Kelvin to the negative one. So with those in hand, we can go ahead and start calculating our resistances. So let's start off with R2. As always, we're going to start by calculating the Grasshoff number. And we know that the Grasshoff number is just beta times delta T times gravity times L cubed all over nu squared. Delta T for this problem comes from the change in temperature between our two walls. And so the delta T here is going to be 60 degrees. The L value, our characteristic length for an enclosure, is the distance between the plates. And so that will be our 0.6. Everything else should be straightforward. And the value that we end up with here is 1.218 times 10 to the ninth. 
Next, we go ahead and calculate our rally number, which is just Grasshoff times Prantl. And that gives us 8.801, again, times 10 to the ninth, or sorry, times 10 to the eighth. Now we have multiple equations that we need to look through. Now, instead of only looking at the rally number to determine the equation we need, we also need to look at the ratio of H over L. So for this problem, H over L is just one over 0 0.6 or 1.67. So that's between one and two. And so our new salt number for that value is going to be 0 0.18 times the Prandtl number over 0 0.2 plus the Prandtl number, multiplied by the Rowley number, the entire quantity to 0 0.29. So using this equation, we can plug in our values and we get that the new salt number is 128.4. So for this large enclosure, the heat transfer rate is 124. The heat transfer rate is 128 times what it would be for still air. That makes sense because there's a lot of room for the air to move around in there. Using the Nusselt number, we can go ahead and calculate our heat transfer coefficient, which is just Nusselt number times K divided by L. And that's going to be equal to 5.85 watts per meters squared Kelvin. Finally, we can get to our R2 value by taking one over H2A, and that ends up being 0 0.0855 Kelvin per watt. Now, like I said, we can apply symmetry to this problem because of this assumption we made. That means, that we only need to find one of the two other resistances because both R1 and R3 should be equal because of that symmetry. Now our Grassoff number for this problem is going to be almost identical to the first. The difference is we need to use this H value instead of L. And of course, because it's a different resistor, the delta T will be changing. Now, delta T for both of these is going to be exactly 20 degrees. So calculating that, we end up with 1.881 1 times 10 to the ninth. And our Rowley number, which again is just Grasshoff times Prantl, is going to be 1.360 times 10 to the ninth. And we use our standard vertical wall formula. And we're in the range where our new salt number is going to be 0 0.1 times the Rowley number to the one third which is 110.8. So the heat transfer coefficient for both one and three, our thermal conductivity, divided by the same characteristic length that we used in the Grassoff number. Plugging all that in, we end up with a heat transfer coefficient of 3.03. Finally, from there, we can get the resistance of both one and three, as equal to one over that H value we just calculated multiplied by the area. And the area of course is the area that the heat is being transferred through, which is that height multiplied by width. And that's the same for both of these. That is going to be 0 0.165 Kelvin per watt. To update our guesses, we need to calculate our total resistance and that's pretty easy to do. Our total resistance is just the sum of our R2 plus R1 and R3. So two times this value plus this value. And so our R tote is 0 0.4155 kelvins per watt. And of course, we know that our delta T is equal to Q dot times R tote. So if a delta T of 100, our Q dot is just going to be 100 divided by this 0.4155. So that gives us a Q dot is equal to 240 watts. So with that piece, we can use delta T's over individual resistances. And so our delta T, Tn minus Tw1, is going to be equal to that same Q dot multiplied by R1. And what this gives us is 240 multiplied by our R1 value ends up being 
0.6 degrees Celsius. So 100 minus TW1 gives us 39.6. So we know that TW1 is going to be equal to 60.4 degrees Celsius. Now from symmetry, we know that the delta T over R3 is going to be the same as R1. So that means that the difference here is also 39.6 which tells us that TW2 is going to be 39.6 degrees Celsius. So these would be our new guesses as we iterate through this process again. We've gotten a lot closer to what the actual values are going to be. So now is also a good time to go ahead and start looking at what the actual fluid properties should be as we calculate each of these resistances. That's going to break symmetry, which means that our R1 and R3 are going to be separate. We're going to calculate those two values in two different steps. So we're going to have to go back, calculate R1, R2, and R3, and plug all those back in and iterate through this process again. But the process will stay the same. So I hope this gave you a feel both for how to tackle some of these more complicated problems that require some iteration and also showed you just kind of how we approach uh, the enclosure. Pretty much all of it's the same. It's just we need to be careful about what our characteristic length is and make sure that we're keeping track of the delta t values that we're using. In any case, I hope this was useful and I'll catch you next time.